every time I leveled up in life, uh -huh. it was a byproduct of I had more people to be held accountable to. How, how do you run two companies as a full-time CEO for both? You know, to me, say the enemy doesn't believe in what you believe in, but the enemy has more resources than you. He can make a bigger impact than you can. Say you got a better vision, say you got a better cause than the enemy does, but you don't want to go out there and make money, you can't really make an impact. But if you got the money, you go work your tail off and you make whatever that number is going to be for you, the 100 grand, the million, 10 million, billion, whatever the number may be for you that you want to go get, you're able to do more with resources. Simple as that. There's nothing else to it. So it's a waste to not use your talents that God's given you to go out there and do something big with it. It's a waste of time if you don't do it. It's almost an insult if you don't do it. Sure. Never short stopping, now I'm winning like I'm Jida. Steady through the rigor, yeah, I'm getting bigger. Just fighting in them trenches, now I'm making seven figures like. So my guest today is my very own mentor in business and many other aspects of my life. The inspiration to the name of the Seven Figure Squad, CEO of PHB Agency and Value Entertainment and host of a 3.2 million channel. On on YouTube. So, PBD, thanks so much for having, my man. having me at uh, yes. this Christmas festivities. Literally, we're having a fireside chat. Great time here in Montana, man. It's been a blast. For sure. And we, of course, we have Santa Bennett here. Hi, Santa. <laughs> so, so, PBD, I, I wanted to, I wanted to uh, uh, ask you, you know, why Montana? Why, why did you guys uh, choose Montana? I mean, it's a crazy spot. I'm looking outside right now, and uh, of all places to have Christmas in. I mean, this is crazy when you look at this, right? I mean, yeah. I've, not, I've never seen snow this thick before. Uh, everybody's always talked about coming to Montana. Uh, you hear things about Montana. Uh, most people, most of the time, we go to Aspen or we go to Lake Tahoe, places like that. Right. We wanted to try the new location. We saw this house right on the side. I mean, pe people are literally. I mean, you know this. You skied yesterday, right? <laughs> you, ski you, you skied yesterday, <laughs> right on the second floor. You went off on the slope, so it's incredible scenery. But we found the spot. We said, let's go check this place out. Crazy, and it's it's amazing how uh, how America, the world of capitalism, has allowed you to have the opportunity to create something of yourself. You know, a lot of people think that, uh, you know, PBD, you know, is, is, must be so lucky to be him. But I was looking at old videos that your sister was showing uh, us from 2001, 2002, you in yeah. college. Uh, was that, uh, what, was, what was the name of the, the task, the assignment from college? The assignment we did for Valley Community College is when does no really mean no? <laughs> <laughs> you should see these videos. I don't know when these oh videos will ever leak God. out, but uh, crazy. One young. day they're going to leak out. <laughs> crazy footage. Uh, so oftentimes people think, oh, PBD, you know, you're so lucky. It must be so nice for you to, to, to live the life you're living. And, and, and especially in this day and age, there's so many complainers out yeah. there. There's so many people out there, you know, voting in areas where obviously we're being affected right now as a country. And I didn't really start understanding politics or even why I should even get involved in politics or understanding where I should vote. What, you know, we didn't really care. In the military, you automatically vote a Republican. You know, uh, that was, I don't know why. So in this environment of capitalism and understanding politics, let's just start from there. Why should people even get into understanding of why people should care about politics? Because policies impact your life. If you think about, uh, there's a chart that just came out for Wall Street Journal that showed the plus minus of all states, okay, on what's happened pre-COVID to now. Okay, so go from March of, you know, to 2020 mm -hmm. till today, what's yeah. the plus minus? The state that got the most people that moved to it was Florida. Then it was Texas. Then it's a couple other states after that. The state that lost the most people mm -hmm. was California. Yeah. Then it's New York. Yeah. So why do people leave California? Why do people leave New York? Illinois, where I'm from. Why, why do people, that's right, you, yeah. Illinois is top five as well. Yeah. Why do people from Illinois move to Texas? Why do people from California move to Texas and then to Florida? What is it? It's policies. If it wasn't for the policies, people would have stayed in New York. If it wasn't for the policies, people would have stayed in California. If it wasn't for the policies, Elon Musk would have never moved to, you know, Austin. Austin's weather is not as good as LA's weather. <laughs> Where he was staying at in LA, it's 10 times be better weather-wise than it would be in Austin. Yep. But you have to pay attention to policies because uh, fortunately and unfortunately, policies can directly and indirectly impact your life both positively and negatively. A great policy can change your life positively. A negative policy can totally ruin your life. Right now, kids are going to school in LA and they got masks on. Yeah, right. What do you mean kids are going to school? A five-year-old has no clue about what it is to put a mask on. Right, a four-year-old right. doesn't even know what it is. Like trying to get Jordan to keep a mask forget on on a flight, it. forget Zero. about it, right? Yep. So imagine these policies, what are these kids thinking about? Yeah, um, yeah so I would tell you, you gotta pay attention to it early on. 
because long term it's eventually going to impact. Especially if you have big plans of being a big person, like yeah. winning, making a lot of money, being successful, you have to pay attention to policies. I remember when I was younger, I always loved free things. Free stuff, give it to me, right? And if you have politicians out there saying, hey, give me free things, I'll give you this, yep. free college, yep. health care, blah, 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 blah. What's the danger in, the, in saying, okay, let me vote for a candidate that's going to give me a lot of free things from the government, and the government gets yeah. to be larger and more impactful in their life? Yeah, so one of the most, if you, if you have big dreams, okay, think about if you have big dreams. If you don't have big dreams, forget about it. If you don't have big dreams, you don't have dreams, you don't care about your dreams becoming a reality, take all the free things. Yeah. But if you have big dreams, one of the fastest way to have something come in between you and your dreams is somebody that makes your life easier on you, not tougher on you. I understand the need for an unemployment check for 90 days. I totally get it. You, you got 90 days mm -hmm. to go get a job. You know, my policy would be slightly different. I would say, yeah. how much money were you making at your job? Yeah. $5,000 a month. How much are we paying you in unemployment? $2,500 a month. No problem. How many hours were you working at your job? 40 hours a week. I want you to give 20 hours of community service because we're giving you free money for yeah, 2,500 yeah. bucks. Give us 20 hours of community service. Like this, that person's gonna get a job and they're not gonna sit on the sidelines yep. just collecting those checks. So, you even said in one of your podcasts that why not a drug test on top of that? Why not a drug test? You know, why not any of this stuff? Because the, the, the ugliest word today that I didn't like, that most people don't like, most of us don't like, is accountability. We hate accountability. It's a boring <laughs> word. There's, there's nothing sexy about accountability. But it, every time I leveled up in life, uh -huh. It was a byproduct of I had more people to be held accountable to. It, the lower the level I was in life, mm -hmm. the fewer people I had to be held accountable to. When you're an 18-year-old kid, who are you accountable to? Nobody. Yeah. You go into the military, what's your level of accountability? Squad leader, you know, captain, you know, you got the company, you got the first sergeant, you got all these guys. That accountability teaches you on how to deal with that. So when you come outside of a military, you're going into a business structure, you're like, okay, I can handle this. But Accountability is unattractive to most, but necessary for all. And uh, unfortunately, you know, when you're looking at what's going on right now with all these free things being handed out, what automatically goes out the window is accountability. Here's free money with no accountability. Yeah, yeah I'm not a fan of that. PBD, what's your take? Because everybody now is screaming Omicron, Omicron, this variant, yeah. this variant, all yeah. these different things, and always an opportunity for us to shut down lockdown again. We've been through this now for two years. People are kind of getting frustrated and upset. Uh, so if I'm watching this right now, and I'm in this era of the great resignation, people have sought to say, you know what, I want to prioritize my values and principles. How should I be taking this, you know, this variant? Because there's obviously going to be another variant, and it just keeps compounding. And we're supposed to be locked down for two weeks. Next thing we got locked down for two months, and it's, you know, six years, and here we are two years later. Yeah, so you know, you know what I give a lot of credibility to is the, is the following. Uh, I trust my enemies more than I trust my allies. Here's what I mean by that. I trust my enemy wakes up every morning hoping I go out of business. I trust my enemy wakes up every morning hoping that I fail. I have so much trust for my enemies. Sometimes you don't know if your allies wake up every morning hoping you win. Yeah. You don't know because sometimes there's envy, sometimes there's all of this stuff. So say for the people that are sitting there saying, well, COVID is real. How do you not pay attention? Nobody's saying COVID's not real. Who's saying COVID's not real? None of us are questioning. The COVID hoax thing was the first 30 days. After that, nobody started saying COVID is not a real thing. Okay, so COVID's real, yes. All right, so the vaccines are out there for people that want to take them? Yes. Moderna, Pfizer, go pick and choose? Yes. A few months back on a podcast, I talked about what's going to change the direction NBA goes in regards to China. Because everybody was afraid yeah. of China. Like, everybody sure. protects China. All the yeah. players, you know, LeBron, Hollywood. you know, remember even in, in uh, Houston uh, Rockets, the GM, Maury, yeah. who made a comment, LeBron's like, that's not the kind of a comment to me because they know if they go into China, you're going to make two, three times the salary. So if, if, if NBA product goes into China, sure. you got one and a half billion people rather than making 40 million a year. Now you're making 100 million a year, yeah. 120 million a year. They want that kind of Manchester United type of money. They want Messi money. They want Ronaldo money, which there's nothing wrong with that. However, I said, the moment the face of the league flips, the entire concept of China changes in the NBA. Mm. LeBron hasn't flipped yet, but you know what LeBron posted the other day? Yeah. The other day on That's Instagram, right. LeBron posted a picture of Spider-Man, three of them, they're pointing at each other. One's pointing at COVID, one's pointing at cold, one's pointing at flu, meaning what the hell is this? So yeah. is, is it Omicron, is it, is it a cold, is it a flu, is it a this? People are so sick and tired of all this stuff where, you know, just because you get a cough, everybody's worried right now. Look, the reality of, uh, uh, of it is the following. Viruses have come and gone. Innovation due to capitalists and entrepreneurs 
they're gonna go find a way to come out with the medicine, the cure. This has happened for a very, very long time. Those are gonna be tested. Some of them are gonna have some kind of side effects. That's, that's proof, so anybody that says, no, it's not true, there's 100, even Fauci said, every vaccine we've ever come out with, there's been some kind of consequences to it until we fine tune it. So people that didn't trust it at yeah. first, totally fine, I respect it. People that tr do trust it a year later, two years later, you wanna take it, great. That's one way of you taking a choice. But to force it and get this constant, you know, uh, infatuation the media and politicians have with fear because it's such a powerful tactic. You know, as a kid, our parents used to get us to do things simply based on fear. I remember one time my nanny's from Mexico. She would feed fear the pain. kids. Yeah, <laughs> she would feed the kids and she would say, "You better eat your food because coyotes are coming. Coyotes are coming." So one day I'm like, I'm talking to Jen. I'm like, "Babe, what the hell is a coyote?" <laughs> She says, coyotes. Yeah, yeah. I said, why is she telling them coyotes? So the kids would get scared and they would always think there's coyotes outside, right? Yeah, yeah. One day I said, Melba, that's just a please don't use that tactic. Right, right. Okay, just feed them yeah. and take something away from them, but yeah. don't use fear. Eventually, as kids grow up, those fear tactics don't, don't work sure. anymore. Us as adults, you know, America's getting to a point where we're sitting there saying, listen, all these fear tactics work. We're kind of overdosed on yeah. these fear tactics. Let us go back to living our lives. I think that's kind of where we are right now. Back to people looking for work-life work balance, because I know that's a word that keeps getting shown and yeah. presented, and yeah. it's a very annoying word for me. We're sitting downstairs, we're having cigars in the, in the Whirlpool, and I asked you, PBD, how do you run two companies as a full-time CEO for both? And I think you had a very interesting answer. I think a lot of viewers of Seven Figure Squad you know, would like to hear, because a lot of people are thinking, well, if I'm gonna start a business on a part-time basis, I got a full-time job. And I got a part-time business. Yeah. I mean, where do I, when do I stop working? Yeah, so it's, I work two full-time schedules is what I do. And, and, and the best way to figure that part out is it, always ask people that work with somebody. Like for me to learn about how you are is I got to talk to your coordinator. Your, your, I got to talk to your assistant. I got to talk to yeah. your family. I got to talk to your kids. I got to talk to your wife to really learn at what pace you go, right? Okay. To really learn what pace, you know, I go. You gotta go see what the office looks like. You gotta see the scheduling. You gotta see Monday through Saturday, through Sunday. You gotta see that scheduling. I run two companies, it's not because, pe I don't recommend people doing that. Yeah. It's gotta be an obsession thing. For me, it's an obsession thing. I sure. love both of them. They're both kind of intertwined, yet at the same time separated. Um, you, 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 you have to be extremely disciplined on both to run them. I don't recommend people doing it too early. My suggestion is to drag out your 100% obsession into one thing for as long as possible because nothing's gonna do better than 100% into one thing. And then gradually go from 90, 10, to 80, 20, to 70, 30. But up until the very end, put all your energy and everything you got into one, one thing. thing. Andrew Carnegie once said the following thing. He said, put all your eggs in one basket. Just make sure nobody can touch it and they don't fall. So his idea wasn't never put all your eggs in one basket. Right. His idea was put it all in the same basket sure. and go all in in this one thing, right? Yeah. That's more my philosophy than it is about, you know, the other way of running them. So people, the reality is, even if you're going from a full-time career job yeah. to starting a part-time business, there requires a lot of heavy lifting and bending, because I can't imagine at the beginning of PHP and either, or VT, that was a lot of early success on, and what, what kept you going? What, what was like, okay, we're onto something, we're onto something, we keep pursuing this. Yeah, you, you know like when you walk into a room and nobody yet, yet respects you, <laughs> or nobody validates you, you just kinda, no one's even talking to you in the room, right? Yeah. But deep down inside you're like, what, what, how come nobody, none of you guys talk to me? Do you realize how hard I'm gonna work to get the respect, like I'm gonna bust, I belong in this room. If you really fully have that mindset of I belong in this room, it's a very frustrating phase you're gonna go through is because you have to earn the right yeah. to, for mm -hmm. others to say you belong in this room. Until you do that, nobody cares yeah. that you're a great speaker, you've read all these books, nobody cares. The only thing that room cares about is results. If you haven't had the results, nobody cares. So the four things, remember, I was a guy that said, I'm gonna outwork everybody. And I'm gonna outwork every one of my competitors. It ain't enough. Then I said, I'm gonna out improve everybody. Reading all the books, it ain't enough. Then I said, I'm gonna out-strategize because I would go against a couple of the competitors that had better strategies than me. I said, I'm gonna out-strategize. This comes later. This takes a while to come. So when you're newer, you don't yet have all the strategies, right? Okay. Like when Kobe was on Jordan and he's guarding Jordan, he says, hey, Jordan, what do you do with the footwork with this? He says, just use the hips okay. and feel defense based on the hips. 
And Kobe's like, wow, I never thought about that before. That's a strategy. That you're not gonna get that in the first year of playing basketball. That comes. And then obviously last but not least is who can last the longest. <laughs> and that is the most annoying, intimidating thing about competition because we're not really gonna know who the players are for two decades. Who the hell has patience for two decades? Yeah. Very few people. So, yeah, you eventually, if, you get, if you're willing to outwork, out, improve, out, strategy, that's out last, eventually you're going to get the credit you, des you deserve. A lot of viewers on Sam Fear Squad are also faith based. Uh, and, and obviously, uh, the thought process of making a million dollars, for some of them, they've been given this narrative in church that, you know, to be rich, to be wealthy, you know, it's easy for a camel to go to the eye of a needle yeah. and a rich man to get into heaven. Yeah. So, a lot of them feel that I shouldn't become wealthy. And yeah. you're, you're, for a large part of your life, you're an atheist. And yeah, was, since the uh, large part of uh, PHP was a, this pastor named Pastor yeah. Dudley Rutherford, who, who immensely blessed uh, you know, your, your business endeavors. Can you talk to us about your faith? Yeah, no question about it. So I remember one time I sat down with Dudley and I said, Dudley, listen, I'm going through this struggle, the same thing you just said right now. I was 24, 25 years old. And I said, man, do I, do I go become a pastor? Do I go do this? What am I supposed to do? I want to serve my purpose the right way. He says, no, he says, God chooses people to go through different endeavors to make their own impact. Yours is business, you stick to business. Go in at the highest level, just remember to not forget and give praise to the man upstairs because without him. So, yeah. you know, to me, I, I think sometimes the, if, you, if you allow the enemy, say the enemy doesn't believe in what you believe in, but the enemy has more resources than you. He can make a bigger impact than you can. Say you got a better vision, say you got a better cause than the enemy does but you don't want to go out there and make money, you can't really make an impact. But if you got the money, yeah. you go work your tail off and you make whatever that number is going to be for you, the 100 grand, a million, 10 million, a billion, whatever the number may be for you that you want to go get, you're able to do more with resources. Simple as that. There's nothing else to it. If you have a great vision, if your cause is solid, if the values and principles you follow mm -hmm. as a Christian man is solid, you need resources to grow it. And those resources that we use today is the dollar, it's money. So it's a waste to not use your talents that God's given you to go out there and do something big with it. It's a waste of time if you don't do it. It's almost an insult if you don't do it. Sure. Now going into the next year, 2022, yeah. at the recording of this video, we're still in 21. You know, oftentimes we talk about recreation, you know, uh, getting yourself to the next level in your life. So if somebody's watching this right now and they say, okay, PBD, I want to take my life to the next level, uh, what are some of the basic uh, uh, fundamentals you'd be looking for to recreate themselves so that they, they can control their cash flow in 2022 because a lot of them were obliterated the last couple of years. They've depending on government, depending on draining their 401k, yeah. the credit cards, the whole thing. Yeah. How can they make sure they're financially set and squared away for the next year ahead? Yeah, you, you know, everybody goes into a new year and they say, oh, I got big goals. I'm going to do big things. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. I always ask the question, what's different about you this year than last year? Tell me. <laughs> and it's always like, well, I'm just more serious. Tell me why. I, I'm just more dedicated. Tell me why. I'm just so committed. Explain to me why, right? The yeah. biggest thing is you don't want to go into a new year being the same person you were. It's almost like going to a party and you haven't seen your friends and family for the last six months, okay? The best compliments your friends and family are going to give you is what? I don't recognize you anymore. Something's changed about you. What's up with your, uh, your walk? The, the words you use, and I'm not accustomed to that. That's a compliment. Versus people see you six months later, you're the same exact person. You haven't changed at all. Yeah. You're still using the same language. You're still using the same stuff. Everything's still the same. You ain't changing. You want the greatest compliment in the world is where the people close to you say, I don't recognize you anymore. The way you do that, there's a logical side to it. There's an emotional, emotional side to it. The logical side is skill set, having a plan, supporting cast, having the right systems. That's all logical. The emotional side is, having the right enemy, you know, having the right mission, being clear about the vision, having the strong willpower, you're working on your willpower where typically in 2021, when something bad would happen, you would have a setback, you'd be so weak and out of it for two or three weeks, you know, you lose momentum. In 2022, you're working on your willpower. You have a setback, it's only gonna steal three hours of your day, no more than that. I'm not giving you more than three hours. These are small, subtle things that you have to pay attention to to work on yourself going into a new year. Emotional, and logical, but it's got to be changes where people say, I don't recognize you anymore. That was a killer building block diagram that you share with us. Yeah, the 12 you. building blocks, yeah. yeah. And by the way, it's, it's been an honor and a pleasure to be mentored by you and coached by you oh, in man. many aspects of my life. You're the easiest guy to ever work with. <laughs> now, you and Sheena, the easiesiest two people I've ever worked with. Praise Lord. Well, we hope to continue to earn that because we don't take it for granted. So, I look forward to it. For those of you watching this, make sure you follow my mentor's content on Value Team with the PBD Podcast. 
Patchup and David.com. Make sure you hit up my mentor here and give him your biggest takeaway from this conversation. And if uh, you do that too as well, please copy, paste, and put it in the comment section below. If you're watching this on Facebook, make sure you click like and follow the business page. My name's Mark Guy. If you're watching this on YouTube, make sure you click like, hit subscribe, and hit notifications to be alerted the next time we upload our next episode. Please put your biggest thoughts in the com comments and uh, uh, questions if you have in the comment section below. That being said, from Montana, Whitefish, Montana. Montana. <laughs> of all the places. <laughs> Man, my, my mentor, Pat Ben David, I'm a mighty smart guy, and until we meet again, continue to live smart, continue to live smart, and be mighty smart today. today. Well, man. Thanks, people. I appreciate you. Oh. All right.